Let the light, let the light of your glory shine on us. Let the light, let the light of your glory shine on us. Let the About every three weeks, I uh, take my son out, Cameron, to run. He's a, a runner at the high school. It's a senior year. And one of the things we do is we're our training, we do time trials. And time trials are basically testing you to see how fast you can run. And so if you run or jog, then you'll know that this is true, is that uh, jogging and running always includes some amount of suffering. And it's why a lot of us don't want to run because it's painful. And we're like, I don't know if that pain is worth the gain. And so those time trials help us to find out where we are. You know, a, a lot of times in scripture, we are introduced to the idea that God is testing us and uh, to find out where we are, not because he doesn't know, but because because it needs to be revealed to us where we are in our relationship with Him. And one of the ways that that happens throughout Scripture is through uh, suffering and pain that we go through, trials that we go through. And so today, as we look at uh, Peter's words to us, there's about four sections in this uh, letter that he writes that cover the topic of suffering. And so as we begin this next session, section in chapter 4, verses 12 through 13, we're going to take a look at uh, the purpose of suffering and our response to it in our life. So let me read to you 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you. It's so, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice insofar as you share uh, Christ's sufferings that you all also uh, rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. So let's dive into that and see if we can be encouraged today. Maybe you're going through some difficulty. Maybe you're going through a trial. One of the first things that I love about this text is it starts off with beloved. And I've said this before and I'll continue to say it because I think it needs to take root in our hearts. Beloved just simply means that I'm loved by God and that He loves me just like He loves Jesus. That's an incredible statement. And, and when you're going through suffering, that's something that you really need to understand and embrace because when you suffer, when I suffer, my first question is why me? Why am I going through this? So as we think about this text, don't forget that you're loved by God and that He loves you just like He, he loves Jesus. And so He says, uh, the command here is, do not be surprised at the fiery trial uh, when it comes upon you to test you. And, and so the command is, don't be surprised. Don't get caught off guard. Don't be ambushed by your difficulty. Don't be ambushed by the trial. <clears throat> 
Sometimes when we're going through life and then things don't go well, we face difficulty, we, uh, in, in, we have suffering that comes upon us, we can uh, really be uh, caught off guard with that. We can really find ourselves in a place where we're asking the question, why me? Why is this happening to me, God? Why would this ever happen to me? And so he says, look, don't be surprised. Like, don't let it catch you, catch you like totally unaware that, that you're going to go through difficulties. Uh, there's a reference here he makes at the fiery trial. And I don't know for sure that Peter has this in mind, but I think he probably does have this in mind. If you go back to Daniel 3, there's an incredible story of the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who get thrown into the fiery furnace. And I believe that Peter probably has this in mind, writing as a Jew who's following Jesus. And he says, uh, the fiery trial. They went through an actual fiery trial when they did not bow to Nebuchadnezzar to worship him. And then he threw them in a fiery furnace and then Jesus was in the furnace with them. That moment was a test of their faith. It was a test of their commitment. And, and in response to Nebuchadnezzar, he's like, if you don't worship my statue, if you don't worship me, you're going into the furnace and you're going to die. And so they said, look, uh, our God's going to save us, but even if he doesn't, we're not going to worship you. And they stood strong. And that was a test of their faith. That was a test of their relationship with God. And so uh, one of the things that we discover as we read this text is sometimes we have to go through those fiery trials ourselves, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to go through. Now, our, our test may not be exactly their test, and my test may not be your test, but all of us will get tested. We will all have time trials at some point uh, to uh, help us to discover where we are in our relationship with God. So don't be surprised when this comes upon you. It's if, if you were in school, you would go to class and you would know some point in the class, there's going to be a pop quiz, there's going to be a test, there's going to be an exam. Living life, you have the same thing taking place. You're going to have t uh, trials, you're going to have tests, you're going to have exams, you're going to have quizzes sometimes. Quizzes being maybe those little difficulties you go through. And then sometimes it's just like the, the final exams and you go through these really difficult times. And so don't be surprised when this happens to you. As a matter of fact, uh, he goes on to say, hey, look. Don't, con don't think that it's strange, like something strange is happening to you, something that's out of the norm. Everybody that you know is going through these tests. Everybody that follows Jesus is going through these tests. It's not uncommon. And so you don't have to feel like, I, well, I'm the only one going through this. No, you're not. Uh, anybody who follows Christ should not be surprised and think it's strange that they're going through suffering, that they're going through difficulties. Matter of fact, Jesus over and over in the Gospels tell us, look, you will be tempted. You will be tested. Uh, if you follow me, you will be persecuted. That's not like if, it's just, hey, you're going to go through this. It's more a matter of uh, when you'll go through them, not if you will go through them. And so as we think about this, we think about, okay, it's not strange. Uh, Jesus said we would go through these. I'm not an exception to the rule. So when I go through suffering, what should my response be? Now, this is, you know, there are things in the scripture that I find are really, really difficult to do. Um, you know, some of the things like I feel like, hey, you know, that's not really that hard to do. Uh, I do need Jesus to help me do this. But this is one of the things that I think like for me <clears throat> and I think for you to do this in the midst of suffering is is just incredibly difficult. That's rejoice. Uh Rejoice, be glad. When you're going through suffering, how many of you feel like, hey, I'm just really glad I'm going through this. I'm rejoicing as I go through this exam. I'm, I'm rejoicing as I go through this fiery trial. If you're like me, and I think most of us are, are similar in this way, is that we go through difficulties. That's not for our first thought is, hey, I'm so glad that God is testing me and taking me through this. Uh, rejoicing is tough. It, and one of the things that uh, blows me away as I've learned to walk with Jesus is, you know, he commands me on the things that I need to do. He commands me on the things that I need to say. He, he commands me also in my attitude, in my emotions. 
Now think about that for a second. So God not only commands us to do the right things and say the right things, but he also wants us to feel rightly about our situations. And so he says, rejoice. And that is emotional. Is that I need to emotionally respond to the right way, to, to these things in the right way. And so when you read James chapter one, verses, uh, verse two through four, you know, it starts off, uh, consider it joy, uh, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds. Uh, I mean, like every time I start reading James, I'm like, boy, that's hard to swallow down. And it's really hard uh, to do. Like I understand it, but doing it is tough. You know, when you read a uh, text uh, like uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, when it talks about Jesus being the author and perfecter of our faith and who for the joy set before him endured the suffering and the shame of the cross. Those are amazing, amazing passages that when, when you really think about it, it's like, okay, I got, a, I got God commanded me to do this. I got com God commanded me to say this. And then I got God commanded me to feel this. And so as we think about rejoicing, how can I get to a place in my difficulty, in my suffering, in my trial where I truly can rejoice? And I, I think it goes, the answer is in the text itself. He says, but rejoice in so far as you share uh, Christ's sufferings that you, almost, uh, uh, that you also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. I think there's two things. One, we share in the sufferings of Christ. And that seems, simply means we identify with Christ. We, we know that Christ, who was perfect, went through these difficulties. And so we shouldn't be surprised that we go through these difficulties. And by going through these difficulties and rejoicing and understanding God's purpose for these things in our life, it helps us to understand that, hey, we are recognized as followers of Christ. My response allows other people, allows even myself to understand uh, that I am a follower of Christ. And so one of the things that uh, suffering does in our life is it helps us to know, hey, we are in relationship to Jesus and we are living the life like Jesus. And so uh, he says, hey, in the future, you be glad because glory is going to be revealed. That's why like when you look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, and you, you think about Jesus being the author and perfecter of our faith, it says he endured the cross uh, because of the joy set before him. It, it doesn't mean that Jesus like looked forward to the pain of the cross because you remember if he is in the garden, he was in pain and stressed out looking at the cross. He was, he was saying, God, is there any other way? So it's not like you as a Christian, like, hey, I just love to hurt. And so I can't wait for God to put pain on me. It's the product that it, it gives in our life as we go through the pain. That's what we're rejoicing about. The glory that's going to be revealed. So I share in his sufferings because I know that God is going to use this. In other words, God will take uh, the, the things that we feel cursed in our life, those painful uh, things, or even someone else's curses if you're being persecuted, and he will bring about blessing from those things. I remember a guy who impacted my life years ago. His name was Dave. And being around him for a couple of years, he was uh, very sick. As a child, he had polio. He as he got older, he had cystic fibrosis. And one of the things that used to amaze me about Dave, and I, and I would say, if I've known anybody I felt like was really close to God, it was this guy. He used to say, God has blessed me with incredible needs. And, and I don't know many people have that attitude. But he rejoiced in his suffering because his suffering was allowing him to have a testimony. And he was one of the most incredible teachers of God's word because I think he knew God in a way that most people don't because he had gone through these things. Those uh, sufferings had caused him to have a really intimate relationship with God. And so those fiery trials that he faced, those curses that he faced had now become his blessing. It was the reason that I met him was because of all that he had gone through giving him a platform to share the gospel with people. So you don't know, and I don't know how God's going to use our difficulties to set us up, not only uh, to grow us, but also to make a difference in our community in our world and the people we come in contact with. And so as we walk through this today and we think about this, what, what, how are you suffering today? What is your difficulty? What is the trial that you're going through the exam? Have you thought to say, Hey, what if I embrace this moment, not because of the pain, 
but because of the gain. And that's where I really think Peter's writing to us. I mean, if anyone knew about this, it would be Peter. It would be the other uh, apostles who wrote uh, these uh, books in the New Testament. Jesus suffered and all of those disciples suffered. So we shouldn't be surprised when we suffer. You know, success often causes us to forget God, but suffering always makes us feel like God has forgotten us. And so when you're going through suffering, God has not forgotten you. He is putting you through a test because he's at work in you so that he can work through you as we wait for the return of Christ. And when we see him one day and we're in heaven with God, we'll begin to understand all the purposes of why God took us through that fiery furnace. <music>